Can I tell you how bad my cold was that I sounded like Sam Elliott for like a day and a half? I was doing voiceovers for Dodge Rams. <laughs> how come when I get a cold, I sound like the grandma from the Goonies? <laughs> what the hell? Hit puree! <laughs> that's, a, that's exactly <laughs> it. So guys, um, after about 20 to 22 minutes of Paul fawning over uh, Matt Breida, I decided to turn the camera back on. <laughs> now, hear me out. <laughs> now, I, okay, uh, okay I'll, I'll hear you out for a second, but I, I want to know, I want you guys to tell me in the comment section, okay? Now, it'll depend, it will depend on who the real OGs are and who are some of the people that we got new. But if you can name 10 of Paul's favorites. Oh, five. Let's go five. Let's no, go I'm five. saying the real OGs can get 10. If you can name OGs five, can can, okay, I'll go five. And you can't use David Johnson. No, David Johnson. But my point is this. That's the – not just running backs. Who are five to ten of Paul's favorites that he always uh, loves? And we're about to talk about one of them right now. Hear me out on this. Because I know that some players that I've had, you know, I had football crushes on have ended up in Buffalo, and that hasn't always worked out. All right, we're not naming names because no, those are part of the exactly thing. part of. The, so I know it hasn't always gone according to plan. <laughs> However, <clears throat> two years ago, Matt Buda <laughs> ran 22 miles an hour down the football field for a 74-yard touchdown. So, I want you to look at the running back class you have right now, and then I want you to imagine Sonic the Hedgehog running circles around all of them, and that is Matt Breida compared to the rest of this running back. But Paul, that instant was three speed. injuries. Instant speed. Injuries have consistently been an issue with Breida. You signed him for league minimum. He is lightning in a bottle. I he loved lightning your, in a bottle. I loved your tweet, by the way. What? So you're not I getting send a Miami. lot of tweets, dude. Not, I don't know. You're not getting Miami Matt. You're getting Bay Area Brita. That's There's a big difference, <laughs> right? Like, when Miami signed Brita, I was like, oh, man, Brita with Chan Gailey is going to be a problem. He got his home run threat. That's what he wanted. Yeah, exactly. Brita with, Brita with Gailey is going to be a problem because Brita catches really well out of the backfield. Mm -hmm. He can pass protect. He's really patient at the line, so he waits for those cutback lanes, and then he's gone. Like, I was just convinced that Brita and Gailey were going to be a problem together. And they just never got on the same page. No. Whatever it was, Miles Gaskin just got it quicker. What For whatever that means. Yeah. But Matt Brita in Buffalo is lightning in a bottle for league minimum. Oh, my God. Like now, Even though he's league okay. minimum, even though he had injuries, does it take Harris or – Najee Harris or Etienne? Etienne. I just literally remember the, the initials. It's just the easiest way. Okay, Etienne. ETN. Okay. Does it take Harris or Etienne off the table at 30 now that you have Brita? I because mean, we, I, I, but one of my few tweets, you know, you, we forget they signed uh, Yeldon and Gore before they drafted Singletary. Right. So yeah. this doesn't necessarily take – it, them off the table, or does it? Because you have your home run threat. Well, I think it adds a profile that you didn't have, right? And I think adding yeah. Brita makes Najee Harris less likely, right? Because Harris is a three down back. Yes. Like he's your typical three down back, <coughs> you know? And I think that's closer to Moss. Not saying Harris and Moss are equal because they're not, no. right? I think Harris is, Harris is unilaterally more dynamic than Moss is. Right, yeah. he's faster than Moss. He's bigger than Moss. Like I think there's some things about Harris that are dynamically different he's than Moss. Huge. Right, but and I hate the whole oh it's the second Derrick Henry. Like I don't I don't buy into Derrick Henry is he is a linebacker. Did you see him doing push-ups the other day? No, he had a chain around his neck. 
he was on a bench doing push-ups on a freaking rubber band. Like, what the hell's? That he's guy, not human. No. That man is not human. No. Like, just take his plasma and multiply it, and the coronavirus will be gone. <laughs> He's the Chuck Norris of football. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? He's the Chuck Norris. I oh, felt the I earth mean, move Chuck, when he was doing push-ups. I felt the earth move when he threw Josh Norman. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's, I mean, Derek Henry is from another universe. He is. Right? Yeah. He's from another universe. And I, I think the comparisons to Harris are, are stretching right? yeah. quite a bit. But I think Brita takes Harris off the board, right? Because it shows that they understand the profile that they missed. They really needed some speed in the running back. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And think about this, right? Because Breed is signed for the veteran minimum. I don't know what his signing bonus is, but even figuring in the sign, signing bonus, let's say he didn't take a signing bonus at all. Matt Breed is going to cost you against the cap $70,000 more than Terrell Dodson. That's it. That's it. He's against the cap. He's cost you seventy thousand more than Terrell Dodson. Now, if he takes a signing bonus, you just have to add that in. But as long as the signing bonus was under one hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars, he's cost you seventy thousand dollars more than Terrell Dodson. It's a no-brainer. I it's think a no-brainer. this is a classic. Now, we've been talking. This is how many times he's done this that we're saying the word classic. This is a classic bean move. Yeah. Not etn. Doesn't take ETN off the board, but it takes Harris off. You think it kind of takes Harris off the board? I think it takes Harris off the board. I think you start looking at those guys who are a little bit more speed driven, right? I think it acknowledges that you need that profile. Yeah, and the fact that you're able to, like I said, classic. He understand. He understood what the need was, like you said. Got some speed in that running back room for near nothing. You right. ca- call him for, for free. nothing for, for free. free. Yeah, yeah, basically free. Basically free. Is that room getting crowded? Uh, well, so let's let's break that down, right? You got Singletary, you got Moss, you got maybe you're probably still going to draft a player. Like you, they they always grab somebody somewhere, right? You, you might still draft a player. You got Christian Wade, who I I just don't think you can. I mean, they're they're working on developing him for a reason. Yes, right. Yeah. But, but I, I don't know if that's really a reality. But he's not twenty four. Right. Is, is our yeah, point? Right. He's like twenty eight, twenty nine, something like that. Which is. Taiwan Jones, like, but not no, really a running back no, anymore, not, no. right? You kind of passed that. So <clears throat> the the one is Gainwell from Memphis. He's like the one that everybody's talking about oh, as okay. like the value running back because you you know how we've seen this show before, right? Third round back, third round back, no. right? You just start looking at it. But I know I agree. I think the room gets crowded because if you sign Brita again, short term issue, right? Yeah. But if you're really interested in taking a back, you're moving one of these backs that are already here. Like you're not going to move Christian to Wade. I think they they like Zach Moss a lot more than they like Devin Singletary when he first got here. And I will fight anybody who disagrees with me. That they liked Moss day one more than they liked Singletary day one. You think that's so? Well, wait, no, wait, go, wait, wait, go, wait. go back and go back and look at just go back and look at the usage. Moss started <laughs> splitting carries and splitting snaps and splitting touches day one. Singletary kicked and screamed and scratched for every touch that he got, and Gore continually outtouched him. So do you think they, they didn't for, think Moss was going to be there for him? I, I don't know about that. Okay. I don't okay. know about that. All right, so your two scenarios are this, if I, if I get this correct, okay? Number one, they're trading one of the backs that they've recently drafted. I think so. I think so. You take, or, yeah, I think so. Bean's propensity to get insurance policies is we sign Matt Breida if we can't get Harris or ETN. Right. Yeah. So, technically, both of them <clears throat> still could be on the table, but McDer- uh, Bean's like, okay, let's put the, let's put Breida in our back pocket. Yeah. Because if you cut him, it costs nothing. If you cut him, it costs a signing bonus. Yeah. Which is. Less than one hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars in all in all likelihood. I love how we talk about it like it's nothing, but it would take it's the truth, that, yeah. right? Like I understand these are people and families, like, and here we are, we're talking about them like they're trading cards. Like I get it. <laughs> no, no, the fact that we're talking about one hundred thirty-seven grand, like it's nothing. Oh like, yeah, I know. Put that in my bank account tomorrow. Let's see what yeah, happens. Thanks. thanks. <laughs> you guys would see hashtag studios. Yeah, I would be I would be a tackling dummy. For all <laughs>
the point is this. Um, which one is it? Because in a draft that's so... What? Singletary's gone. No, no, I meant which which option would it be? It was the fact that they got Brita for a they got Brita for an insurance policy. They can't get one of those two, or the tra- trade Singletary. What Look, kind of value does he own? I he still carries the moniker that he could play three downs for you, right? Plus, with here's here's where this gets here's where this conversation gets a little sticky, right? You have multiple players who are coming out of college who didn't play college football last year. Yes. Right? This is a nasty draft. So I think teams are interested in players that they <coughs> understand and players that they know and players they can actually talk to, players they can actually meet with. Because these teams can't meet with any of these college players, can't personally meet with any of them. But I guarantee that if a GM called and said, hey, you know, uh, is Singletary available? Bean's going to say, everybody's available. What are you talking about for Singletary? Well, Let's, uh, would you do a fourth and a fifth next year? I might do that for single. I really would. Like, I might do that. I might do that for Singletary. You look at the snaps that he gave you and say, how much more can Zach Moss give you than what Singletary already gave you? I think it's equal. It seems like he's equal. He's ahead of Singletary at this point. Both it seems like the the pecking order because Moss got Moss was splitting touches day one. Mm -hmm. Singletary was held off by Frank Gore for weeks and weeks, and I think everybody's high on Singletary because everybody projected him into the twenty twenty one season, and then it was a disappointment. But everybody still has that thought in their mind, like, oh. Devin Singletary is a really good running back. But look at the AFC Championship game. Did he have a broken f-ing leg like Cole Beasley? No. Singletary was fine. And TJ Yeldon played more snaps in the AFC Championship game than he did the entire season. If that doesn't tell you that Singletary's on the ropes, I don't know what does. I really don't. You know, I could see a team biting on Singletary. That's always in cap trouble. That could use a running back like him down in that system. New Orleans? No. Nope. New Orleans needs a second. Right, right division. Who are you thinking? Well, two teams in that same division. You need a guy to back up CMC. Oh, yeah. And you already have the connection down They lost there. Mike Davis. Mike Davis went to Washington, I think. But, yeah, the point is, he'd be a great spell back for um, Christian McCaffrey, or they're going to be looking to get out of that contract soon. A guy, a guy that needs um, that needs running back help that could that could part with some picks. Atlanta. Did you see Singletary down in Atlanta? Oh man, that's a good call. Yeah, I could see Singletary in Atlanta. I, I'd love to absolutely. See I could see Singletary. Well, I don't. Know, I wouldn't love to see it, but I, it would for, be a, it would be a positive step forward in his career because I just don't think the opportunities are going to be no, here in Buffalo no. for him. In a different offense, he's more productive. I agree with I that. I believe that he's more productive in I a different offense. That. I agree with that. And we're going to have to sit there and listen when, why do we use him like that here? Different offense. Right. And, well, Singletary's a fall forward back. Like, there's a lot of things to really yeah, like about yeah, Devin Singletary. Yeah. And we mentioned in our previous episode, if you have right. Singletary and Moss, which is a position that's not really highly coveted, is highly paid out anymore, the running back position, you use two draft picks, which is the cheapest option for yet running back position, where – you threw the ball 40 times a game last year. Like, will, would you need a top 10 back for it? Right. You did. Right. But, no, but, God, the Carolina point is actually really good. <coughs> because Carolina is going to look at getting out of that CMC contract at some point. They have point. to. Right. They have to. And you get two years of Devin Singletary to figure it out. Yeah. I mean, Mike Davis looked damn good down there last year. He did. Damn good. But CMC is a different animal. Though. Sure he is. I just yeah, know of course he is. But I, I, I think you... It's it's an interesting dynamic between him and him and Singletary if you had them both in the same backfield. Right. Yeah. Oh man, that's an interesting one. So what do you move Singletary for? What's what's the line? What's too little? What's too little to move him for? Well, I mean, they trade Lee Smith for a seventh. The, Lee Smith should not be used as a measuring stick for anything. Brandon Bean's a wizard. Lee Smith was talking about retiring. And he's oh, still got a seventh forever, round pick. Oh, forever he will be the barometer of a seventh round pick. <laughs> <laughs>
Is he Lee Smith? Is he Lee Smith? No, he's not Lee Smith. I I think if you're able to finagle two picks, but I a fourth. That's why I set a fourth and a fifth next year. Because we set no. I mean, if, if you get you want both contracts, you want both contract years replaced, right? He's got two years left in his deal, so I think two picks makes the most sense if not, you can get not two get picks. It. No, you won because you got a four year deal out of it. Yeah, I know, but no. My point is this: I took the opposite approach where if he gets a fourth, Bean loves to package two fourths for a third. He does. He always does that. So yeah. you would get that third back eventually. At that point, what don't the Bills have this year? The Bills don't have a fourth. With the they don't deal? have a fourth. No. Not saying it's going to happen, but... What do you guys think? What would you guys happen? deal Singletary for if you had to? Interesting. Interesting. In Teddy's home. Would you trade him for uh, play tickets to Arizona to go see our friend Sean at MrRogersHomes.com? I don't know plane tickets. I don't know if I'm flying so much nowadays. You know how many episodes we could film driving to Arizona? Do you know how many episodes we could film in a plane? None. Why? Our equipment barely works now. 